What's up, guys? Uh, this is the first time that I'm gonna try to do like a uh, like a voiceover on a video, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but pretty much, this is a video that will show you how um, how I rotate my tires. Uh, now, for front wheel and rear wheel drive, um, obviously there's different configurations, but this is for the all wheel drive car on how to rotate. Uh, basically, you just keep the side you keep the tires on the the sides keep the tires on the same side of the car that they're on you just flip them so the front tire goes to the back position and the back tire goes to the front position so that's it so you always keep them on the side of the on. and uh, here I'm, I'm pretty much setting up so getting the getting the car jacks out uh, I, I'm only going to show you the driver's side. I already did the passenger side, and then I went ahead and moved my car out and closer to my to the other car next to me, so that I have room to do this side. Um, yeah, and you'll you may notice I'm sweating like crazy. It is hot out. I picked the wrong day and the wrong time to do this, but I just had the urge, like you know, I have to rotate my tires. I don't know why, I just I wanted to. I don't even think I'm due yet, but I just wanted to. All right, so. Uh, just go ahead and you know you can see in the video what tools I'm using pretty much but just uh, you know measured up pretty much you just need uh, you need uh, the deal for your your lugs your lug key well you know like a lug lug adapter for the regular ones and then you might also have a special lug that has a certain groove on it which you'll need a certain like a lock key or whatever for it and you'll just need uh, the adapter part that'll fit into that and then into your, your wrench or socket, whatever you want to call it. And then you'll also need, or I also recommend that you get a, uh, a torque wrench. You can torque it at the end, make sure it's the proper spec, two proper spec. <clears throat> but um, right here, you know, may not be the best way, this is how I do it. I just you know, put it on there and I'm basically just breaking them loose. You don't want to jack the car up in the air and then be pushing on it, tugging on it, trying to get those loose. So I break them loose while it's on the ground. Uh, you know, I don't turn them a whole heck of a lot, so you know the wheels aren't going to fall off or anything. And uh, you know, I try not to impact it too hard; just kind of, kind of bounce on it a little bit till it gives way. Uh, these are torqued at 70 foot-pounds, by the way. So, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know. If you're looking before, you saw you know I jacked up uh, the car on the front, and then I also put a, a floor jack on the rear just to hold it, just more support in case one of them gives. But there's little notches underneath the car, and it's even in your owner's manual. It'll show you where you're supposed to be able to put a floor jack, you know, to support the car. So that's that's what I did. Nothing special other than that. Okay, so the broke loose, and now I'm taking the um, the adapter socket. And I'm just kind of by hand, just kind of loosening them a little bit. I'm wiping off because it's hot. <laughs> I'm getting the oil. Okay, I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> okay, yeah, so yeah. You know, I got everything pretty much I needed. I, I broke them loose. And then now I'm jacking up the car. And that cardboard was kind of in the way. I forgot that was there. Um, I have like a little oil drip going on underneath, but it's no big deal. I already popped off my oil before I made this video. Okay, so now I'm just trying to get it just high enough where the tire clears the ground so I can pull them off when I'm ready. So the rear one's pretty much in position, just making sure the top one's good, alright, so they're both up, they're both holding, they're both pretty much level. And then now, I believe I'm just Taking them off. 
And you know, if you kind of see them kind of blowing them out, uh, they're, they're open-ended lugs. I think they're like the SR28s or something like that. With Neo, Neo Blue. It's not Neo Chrome. It's like Neo Chrome Blue. I can't remember the exact uh, model, but they they seem to work pretty good. And there, I was checking the camera, make sure it's still on. There it is again. <laughs> yeah, I really wish the lighting was would have ended up a whole lot better. Okay, that's, I think that's the last lug, and usually those are the hardest ones to get off, or they, the most uh, pressure is on them because the tire's starting to come off, so it's pushing up against it, so you just gotta get it loose, take it off. Okay, so now the tire is just hanging there, uh, just on the threads, that's it. So it's gonna loosen the other side, take them off. You know, if you remember, we uh, already broke them loose, so it's, they're not going to be ridiculously hard. Just get them off. Yeah. And, you know, this is just one way to do it. You can also break all four tires loose and then jack up the whole thing, make it level, put on four jack stands, and then you can pull the tires off and do it that way. But I just did one side and then the other side because I really did not want to pee out in the sun. You know, because I would have had to back my car out. Uh, I didn't have the keys to the car next to me, so I couldn't move it, or I would have. And then I would have just parked my car in sideways. And then maybe I could have did that and jacked the whole thing up. But, you know, work with what you got. Yeah, and well, uh, you know, while you're taking your tires off, not only do you want to check them check the tire, check the wheel, check everything, but uh, you can also check inside, you know, your hub, your rotors, brake lines, bottoms of your coilovers, your struts, you know, just while you, while you're there, while you have it like that, you can just go ahead and check all that. I kind of did a little, little look over it real, real fast. So I think they're all off now. Yep, wiping again. It's hot. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Okay. Yeah, and I, I like to do it the hard way. I know a lot of people they just put their foot underneath the tire and kind of, kind of use their foot to, to, I guess bump it off and it makes it real easy. But I just, I don't know. I just do it the way I do it. Uh, here I'm checking the tire. If there was a rock or something yeah just looking for nail screws anything you know there's been construction areas that I have to drive through often so and obviously that one's gonna be relocated to the rear and checking again this one was even cleaner than the other one checking the inside of the wheel and this one will go to the front Okay, now this is something that uh, is really up to you. I do it. Uh, I honestly can't remember why I do this, but I do. Um, I use a little bit of motor oil on the threads before I, I put the lugs back on. I don't know, you can, um, what is it, anti-seize or whatever. I know it's not Loctite, I think it's anti-seize so that the lugs don't get stuck to it, especially aluminum. But I just use motor oil I just put a little bit on the threads really I should take a wire brush and scrub all that crap off of them but I mean they're fine uh, eventually I'm gonna get the extended threads and then I think these lugs because uh, they go all the way through I think they're actually like bored out to where an extended thread would fit all the way through I think if not I'll have to machine them out but uh yeah so yeah just Lubricating the threads and I'm um, wiping off the excess from the hub. Uh, you know, do not, whatever you do, do not get any oil on your rotors. RP, do not get any on your rotors. <laughs> you know, uh, be very scarce with the oil. I'm just putting a little bit on the threads and kind of wrapping my finger around. Again, I wish you could see better, but 
I'm just putting a tiny bit. Just get it a little lubricated. I think in some cases this might actually help uh, the torque be more accurate, maybe. I don't know. Again, I forget why why or where I learned this from, but I always do it and I've never had issues. Uh, so if you want to skip this step, you know, just go and get the actual stuff, the anti seize or whatever. And if you want actually uh, clean your clean your threads off before you put the lugs back. So again, wipe in the area. Uh, no oil hit the rotor at all, but you know I'm just I'm wiping the hub because it's a tiny bit going on there. Possibility it could drip, could move around when your wheels rotate. You never know. So the only place that the oil is on are the threads. So we don't want the oil, don't want that rag, don't want those nasty gloves. And yeah, normally, it wouldn't really matter whether or not I wore gloves. You know, I don't care what get my hands dirty, but in this case, you know, I was messing with my camera and messing with my phone. So I really didn't want to get them all greasy and dirty and oily. Okay, time to put the tires back on. Or wheels, wheels and tires. And again, uh, I just do it the way I do it. Most people kind of use their foot to leverage it. I just do it this way. But yeah, I pretty much just try to line up the holes with the lugs. I mean, with the with the thread pattern as best I can. Move it up close and then just lift it up and get it on there. And I had very little clearance, and that cardboard was getting in the way. I think here I'm going to move it, and come to find out it's actually taped to the ground. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, taped it. Yeah, and depending on how you jack up your car, you know, it's it's going to be in an angle, like mine is a little bit, and. Uh, you know, when you put the wheel on there, it's not going to be all the way like flush with the hub. It's going to kind of be angled a little bit based off of gravity and all that. So pretty much, you know, I take a lug and I usually take the top thread and I I work it in there. You know, I, I get it started and I, I put it in. And then usually I push the wheel in a little bit and do one of the bottom ones. And then kind of just do a star pattern uh, putting the lugs on. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter at, at this point, but it's just how I do it. So, see so now I think I just did, I'm just uh, making sure they're tight. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of weird when I do these. See, I just put them on hand tight right there and then I think I got the adapters for it yeah so I'm putting the, the lug adapters on and I'm using that to screw them in and I pretty much I, uh, if I remember right I, you know, I pushed the wheel on that corner and then I the lug that's near that corner I hand tighten I'm pretty much just going in a star pattern and I'm tightening them uh, you have to remember you know that there's like with gravity and everything and weight, there's force pushing out. So, you know, if you start from one lug and you do a star pattern, by the time you get back to the, the starting lug, there's room to tighten it even more. So I'm kind of just going through it like once or twice, hand tightening with the adapter, just trying to get it as flush with the hub as possible, as close to it, hand tight. Uh, the reason why, you know, is is uh, you know, in case the jacks do fail, if it's you know if it's at least tight on there to the hub, there's less chance that the wheel will come off if it hits the floor. You know, but I mean at this point in time, if the jacks fail, I'm kind of screwed because I don't have a rear tire. <laughs> so I'm kind of trying to get them on there as soon as possible. Once both tires are on and they're hand tight with the lugs on, I'm pretty much safe. But you know. Even at that point, you still don't want to drop the car. Or, I don't. So again, on the rear, just uh, hand-tightening the lugs in there. Well, getting them started and, and 
running them through. that's the last lug yeah the main thing is make sure that they they go into the threads properly I mean usually I'll even up I'll, I'll start them going backwards until it kind of clicks and goes in and then I'll start rolling it forward you know, just make sure that they do line up with the threads and you are not forcing it in there Okay, I think there I'm using the the lug adapter and I'm, I'm hand tightening them again. <clears throat> and I'm kind of weird, like I'll instead of starting with one wheel and tire and completely finishing it and then doing the other, I kind of go back and forth. So you know, first I put the, the tires on, I'll put the lugs on, hand tighten them, and then I'll do the other one, and then I'll come through with the the ratchet deal and I'll. I guess you could say hand tighten it but with the ratchet and it gives you more leverage and you can turn it more. See right here I'm using a tool. And this is basically like the second step of hand tightening but it's you know with the tool. And you can see the the wheel actually move because it's pretty much snug right there. And like I said you know you run it through a star pattern and when you get back to the starting one it has a little more give, so you kind of want to go through the process two or three times, just make sure everything's snug. Um, you know, I'll start with one lug and I'll go through a star pattern, and then, like on the second, uh, and then I might do it again, and then on this, and then on the third and final one, I'll start on a different lug and do it star pattern, but you know, hitting different ones in different orders. And the main thing is that you try to get each one snug and as flush to the hub as possible. Pretty much you know, tight, but you're not cranking on it hard. Uh, you never want to be cranking on your car when it's like, you know, on jacks or anything, or on floor jacks. At least not the wheels. I mean, there's no reason to. Because once you lower it, you're going to torque it. But you don't want them super loose either, because then, you know, you'd be trying to draw the car to the wheel. So, you know, right now you want to draw the wheel to the car and get it as flush as possible and as snug. Yeah, and um, I forget where I read it. I think it was online on some forum or whatever. But the spec, or it was probably even in the owner's manual, but the spec for tightening lugs is, I believe, it's either 58 to 72 foot pounds of torque or like 52 to 70. Four pounds of torque or something like that. Um, I used to always torque it at 60, kind of like right in the middle. But uh, I forget why, but now I'm torquing it at 70. So for those wondering, I torque my lugs on my Subaru STI, the 5x114.3s. Torque it at 70 foot pounds. Yeah. And uh, if you have aluminum lugs, make sure that. You know, you obviously after all this you torque it, but the next day and then maybe a week from then and then a week just check them because heat will make them change. So you pretty much you want to keep checking and if it's off by a little bit, keep torquing it to that 70 until they quit moving and then you're good. Because over time they'll actually, get, I believe they'll get tighter on the car, but you know you need to give it that time. But the ones I'm using now, I don't I think they're aluminum. I'm not for sure, but. You know, yeah, I'm, I took it down today, and then tomorrow I'm going to check them, because tomorrow is actually race day for me. I'm going to go to Thunder Valley and try some drag racing. Uh, and then, you know, a couple days from now I might check it again to make sure, and a week from now check it. But after a while, it'll, it'll, they'll quit moving around, they'll stay close to where they're supposed to be, and then you're good. Okay, so now... 
See, here's the actual torque wrench, and I, I have a, uh, it's a manual one. It has like a little arrow on the front, and it's really hard to see, but trust me, it's, you know, it points to numbers, and I'm going a star pattern, torque them to 70. So I, I go through the sequence once, and then I go through the sequence again, and on the third time, I do the star pattern again by... I go the other way. I start with the starting lug, but instead of going, like if I went to the right, I go to the left and do the star pattern kind of backwards. And pretty much, again, just like when you tighten them up snug when the car is lifted up, you just go through the sequence. You know, any little give, any little slack in there, you want to, you want to torque that out. And in the very end, you want to make sure that everything is flush to the hub, to the car, and it's all torqued at 70. And there's, there's no give, like the torque wrench feels stiff when you get to that mark. If it keeps moving, you might have a bad uh, lug. So it's almost kind of like, you know, being anal about it or whatever. I'm just, I go through the sequence a couple times just to make sure that there's no give and that it's proper. So yeah, I can, you can probably guess I like to torque my own, my own lugs. <laughs> Alright, so that one's good. <laughs> And then the same deal with the rear. Let's put the key in one of the lugs and then put the other adapter in the other one. Start the sequence. Yeah, I think, um, I forget what they're called, but the little, uh, the little adapter that I clicked onto the torque wrench, I think it's a 19 millimeter, and that fits into the the lug sockets, the key, and then the regular one. I think it's a 19 millimeter. But again, just uh, you know, before you start, measure up everything. You know, get all the tools together. And as you can see from this, I didn't use that many. You know, I used the torque wrench, I used the uh, the ratchet deal, and then I used a little adapter. I think, like it, again, like I said, I think a, a 19 millimeter, and then the two lugs that came with, or the, the lug, uh, I think they're called like key, like deep socket keys or whatever, but they came with the actual lugs, so I only used like, what, five pieces of, like, you know, like five tools or whatever, and then I used a little bit of more oil, some gloves, and a dirty shop rag. Which is actually a white cotton t-shirt. <laughs> Going through the sequence. Make sure it's torqued again at 70. That's how I do it. See how we're kind of nearing the end of this. That's it. Victory walk. <laughs> That was so hot, man. I was like, I'm done with this. I ended up washing the car after this, too, but I take a little, like, hour break. So I'm just kind of, I'm just getting all the stuff out of the way. So that I can move my car over back to its original position. And then what you don't see, because I end the video is I clean up all the tools and everything and put them back. Yeah, I'm really glad for that towel, man. It was hot. I was freaking dripping sweat all over my car. <laughs> so that's it. From jacking it up to pulling the tires off, pull the wheels and tires to putting them back on and lowering it, torquing it. Here I am driving the car. Well, moving it, but I'll be driving it tomorrow. Yeah, and if you if you rewind that and you look when I came out of my garage, never knew how low that was, how much how low the lip got to the, because I have like a little hump. You see it right here, the tire kind of comes up. I didn't realize that when I dropped the lip, almost hits the ground. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> so here I'm just gonna move the cardboard back.
So I guess I have a, a, a little leak or two. I need to remove the undercover one of these times and, and check it. And if you ever wonder why I fold my mirror in on the driver's side, it's because I always try to get as close as possible to the wall over here and leave space for the other vehicle. A little bit more. And we're parked. So that's it. This is how I do it. Um, any questions or anything, let me know. Later.